we talked to Coach Unseld uh, and asked him about you, and he said one thing that people sleep on is, is your ability on defense, and it feels like that maybe that can be shown a little bit more this year. Um, just what is your reaction to that and kind of what he's trying to teach you defensively so far? Uh, I mean, he's just pushing me. Um, he realizes I can score and I can do a lot of things on offense, but um, he's known me to be a defender when I first got into the league in my first few years. He's seen that I was able to defend, and he hates the the fact that my defense kind of slipped the last few years. So he uh, he's definitely challenging me in a lot of areas. And granted, we have a lot of guys who who are able to help on the offensive end, so it takes a lot of pressure on me on that end. And I can definitely exude exuberate more energy on, to the defensive side of the ball. Um, but nonetheless, it's still not an excuse for my my slippage. Um, but I still, I still love the fact that he's very defensive oriented. Um, he's pushing me, pushing everybody to be better defenders uh, collectively and taking our individual challenges. And as a scorer and a shooter, is there anything to the new ball uh, this year for you and adjustment or anything you can do to make that adjustment? Oh, uh, yeah, it's an adjustment. Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, it's a little slicker. Uh, Wilson, the word Wilson isn't as embossed as Spalding was, so it's a little. It has its, uh, its differences, but once it's uh, it's broken in, it's, it feels pretty much the same. So it's just a matter of getting used to it. In your team, how do you envision your minutes this year? Because I think you would agree the more minutes you play, you know, there is going to be some slippage somewhere. And because yeah. you were accounted for to do a lot of scoring last year, uh, how do you see the 82-game schedule in terms of your minutes? I have no idea. Uh, I'll talk to Roy West briefly. Um, about preseason minutes. Um, and it's tough because we only have four games and we haven't had a lot of practice time. So it's just trying to figure out that balance between getting, you know, um, everybody on the same page, camaraderie rise on the floor and get some continuity. Um, and also kind of resting guys and taking our time with, you know, flowing into it. Um, but on the back end of that, we have four games and then we only have like a week before we open up. So we want to make sure that we really we're really gelling the right way before we, we get this thing off running officially. So um can't say I officially no. Uh, I know I'm always going to want to play. So I always just assume going into a season, I'm going to play a lot of minutes and high minutes. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how that'll look or how that'll work or what rotations look like, but I'm sure coach has a, a brilliant plan for it. Let me ask you about your YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. With, I think I asked you last week about the talent level that definitely leveled up in your opinion some of the opinions of people in this organization. Does that also equate to what you're going to be asked to do? Because, you know, fourth quarter, five minutes, best players, it's go time, right? Mm -hmm. But before that, like, how do you feel like your usage will be this year? Uh, I probably won't be on the ball as much as I was. Uh, we have a lot of guys who are able to put the ball on the floor. Spence is really good. Owl, um, Aaron is really good. Uh, Kuz can put the ball on the floor, too. Uh, Corey can put the ball on the floor. So we actually have guys who can dribble, play out of pick and rolls, make the proper reads. So that makes my life easier. You know, uh, I can back screen, screen and um, service decoy sometimes and create some confusion to where I get easier shots or get other guys easier looks. Um, so I, I like, I like, I kind of love the fact that we have that versatility and um, so many guys who are able to, you know, put the ball on the floor. It takes a lot of pressure off of me and I'm able to get more open shots, catch and shoot shots I haven't had in a few years. So um, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm excited for it. It's always hard to know who's going to play or how much in the preseason. But um, yeah, what's your uh, take on Jalen Green as you guys may see these moments? I haven't watched much of them. I watched him briefly. Um, I know in high school and a little bit last year. Um, and he's he's super athletic. He's gifted. I know he loves to – he loves hoop. You know, you can just tell he's he's a kid that just loves the game of basketball. He wants to get better, uh, wants to learn. Um, I actually crossed paths with him working out in the summer in L.A. and just seeing how attentive he was to his body that early, that early of age was impressive, you know, and uh, he's gifted. He has a just needs to learn this whole year and every year after this is going to be just a learning experience for him. Um, just take his time. And I'm excited to, to go against him and all the other young guys they have over there. They're very talented for sure. And we know Coach is uh, all about defense and um, gets a lot of praise for attention to detail. Has there been any like specific detail that stood out where you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of like, really small fine print type of thing? Uh, not to that extent. I mean, he's just very 
everything he wants done, he's all about creating that muscle memory to continue to do it, you know? So whether it's a small thing like shrinking the floor after an extra pass, you know, even if a shot goes up, it's just creating that muscle memory to move when the ball is moving, you know? So it's just maybe little things like that, you know, it just constantly, you know, pounds it into our head to, you know, we create that, okay, this is a second nature for us, you know, on the end of the floor. So he's very repetitive and he's going to make sure that the message gets across. What do you think about uh, the team bringing back I love it. Wolfman is is everything. Um, he's my guy. He he gets us going. You know, he's a true engine to our team for sure. Uh, you know, one of the smallest guys to play the four last year. So you know, we I love everything that he has and his heart and uh, his his versatility on the floor. Like he he's very 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 good and crafty. You know, it's just amazing that we we got a we got another opportunity with him. So um, happy for him. I know he's gonna. Continue to shoot the ball, continue to play and make like he's been killing, killing in practice. So, how's the range on your shot? I know that's something you said you wanted to work on. Are you in the uh, the Davis range? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Davis shoots unconscious shots. Uh, I'll shoot that every now and then. I'll shoot those in transition or something like that, but I won't. DB will come off a pin down and shoot that. I can't. I can't do that. Uh, but I've, I've every now and then I've I've worked on it. You know, I'm still trying to figure out my spots and when to do it and when I have those opportunities on the floor. Um, and I kind of have to seek them out, you know, a little bit more than what I have. So uh, I won't say I've been struggling, but I haven't been exploring it like I should. Let me ask you about the label. Like when you came into the league 10 years ago, you were known as the shooter. Mm -hmm. And like now in your 10th year, you're an all-around player. Like how much work did you you put in to get to this point and, and like what's the next step in the evolution oh next step i have no idea it's always keep getting better obviously keep being the best player i can possibly be try to be the mvp you know try to make first team all defense or one of all defensive teams uh first team all nba like shoot for those goals um i guess you know I'm not trying to prove myself scoring wise. I don't think I have to do that anymore. Um, it's just a matter of winning. You know, can I lead a team to the playoffs? Can we be successful in the playoffs? Um, and individually, you know me, I'm always my toughest critic. So I feel like nothing's perfect, nothing's good. I have to get better at everything. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to transition to Zoom for two questions. We're going to start with David Aldridge and then end with Matthew Paris. Brad, you've had, uh, you know, there's always change in the NBA with, with teammates and things, but there's been somewhat stability with you in Washington. I mean, you played with John for a number of years. Everybody kind of knew that's how the team was going. And then Scotty was the coach for five years and you kind of knew what you were going to do and how you were going to do it. I just wonder what it's like to have not only new teammates this year, but also a new coach with a new system and just how, how all that change kind of hits you uh, at this point going into the season. Uh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was digested well over a few months over the summer. So I've had time to uh, develop a relationship with Russ, I'm going to say Russ, with Wes and develop a relationship with the rest of the guys on the team. Uh, whether that was in LA or respectively in DC or where we were in the summer. Uh, and a lot of guys I knew before they came to the team. So it was just uh, kind of rekindle type thing. And, uh, and obviously getting used to playing with each other on the floor, which, you know, we, we came in early in September and uh, as a unit, which we, it's been a minute since I, I want to say we've done that. And uh, it really came in and, and, and got some good work in, got some good camaraderie off the floor. Um, got to engage with each other and really just trying to figure it out. So for me, it was, you know, with where we were last year and the years before, you know, it was, I mean, uh, you know, changes. I felt like every everybody felt like it was boiling in one way, shape or form. Um, you know, we moved on from John then, and then we had Russ moved on from Russ and don't have Coach Brooks anymore. So it was just a clean slate, clean start, you know, and so. For me, it was good. You know, we had the pandemic. It was a crazy year. It was an ugly year. And, you know, it was just an opportunity for everybody to just have a fresh start. And um, that's kind of my, that was my approach coming into the year. You know, this is, you know, last year was what it was. You know, we had a crazy year. Was, we couldn't play basketball for two weeks. You know, that was just ridiculous in itself. So, you know, mm -hmm. you factor into everything that happened to us as a team. Uh, you know, then now 
you know, we have that clean slate, you know, now we can really focus on, you know, what Coach West wants to build this culture as. And now we have, you know, players who we can really build this culture up around too. So um, it's just exciting all around. You know, we have a fresh starting opportunity to make noise for ourselves and have a lot of guys who have an opportunity to spread their wings a little bit. So uh, exciting in all rounds. You, you've talked, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, using you more as a decoy this year and some of the things. What? How do you think that will do, what would that do for you from an energy standpoint to not constantly have to not just score, but create and, you know, be the focal, focal point every possession offensively? Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm still going to have my games. I'm, teams are going to double and triple and, you know, make my, make teams, res, you know, respect the guys on our team. Uh, but it, it definitely feels great knowing that I have other guys who can create. You know, I don't have to come down and make every play. I don't have to come down and shoot the ball every play. Uh, you know, we have guys who can do that. You know, I can focus on guarding guys. If it's not my night, I can go down and guard somebody. You know, so just being able to have that type of confidence and ability in your teammates and guys who are able to make plays is, is good. You know, and we're just constantly getting better and, uh, and putting it all together. Last question to Matthew Paris. Yeah. Hey, Brad, what have you noticed from the way, you know, practicing with Spencer now, just the way that he likes to go about setting up things and kind of his flow and pace to the game? Uh, you can't speed him up. You know, he he plays at his pace. Uh, he has a very first quick step. I think we all know that. It's very much what he's known for. Uh, and his size is just, you know, I mean, obviously you can't teach size, but, you know, his, his ability to be 6'6", six, six, long arms, you know, and be able to get to the basket in a quick step and finish. Uh, he's very patient, you know, like I said, it doesn't get sped up. So, you know, him having that type of IQ is great for us um, because he can play fast. You know, he can do both, he can do either. You know, he loves to play off the ball. He loves to get off it and create and uh, move without the ball. So, you know, he's very versatile. I love it. You know, everybody's, everybody's able to play multiple positions, you know, and I think that's the beauty of our team, beauty of our offense. You know, we just have to figure out our match, our lineups. Um, you know, what works and what jails, and that's what preaching is for. And has that been a different, like, rhythm than John or, or Russ or anything that you, you've been used to? Uh, somewhat, yeah, somewhat. Um, we know John and Russ are more dominant dominant point guards. You know, they, they want to run the offense, get guys in their positions, run the team. Uh, Spence is that way as well, but he's not as, I guess, ball dominant, I guess. You know, he's very much cool as bring it up. You get the rebound. Brad, bring it up. Whoever gets the rebound, let's all push. Um, but there are times if we're getting sloppy, you know, he will go get the ball and get us get us in our offense, which is what a point guard should do. So uh, they all have they all have similar in the way they all play point guard. They all have that same mentality. Uh, but John and Russ, they definitely had a different mentality. With you know, they were they were the point guard. They're going to run the show, and that's how we operated. What is the uh, the, the plan going in tomorrow? Uh, who's going to be available? Uh, essentially everybody. I mean, obviously, uh, Denny was in the five on five, so we were excited to get him out there. We still will be cautious with him and, and bring him along next week. Uh, ideally, you know, that, that puts him available for uh, Saturday's game, but we'll see how it goes, see how he progresses. Um, but it was good to see him in the five on five, get him out there and, you know, get him in the competitive stuff a little bit more today. So I think everybody was pleased with that. And I talked to our friend Howell Neto and he said that, uh, before free agency, after you got hired, you reached out to him and he said that that was that meant a lot to him. Just kind of what, what made what makes you like his game so much? But just his uh, his physicality. I know he's you know he's small in stature. He's got a big heart, a competitive spirit. Um, he's going to push guys, and you know I think his he takes a liking to the defense. And he can be a pain. So just to have that presence is it just changes the tempo a bit as far as how we guard. Um, and, and he believes in it. He trusts it, and he likes doing it. So it's good to have a guy like that who embraces that challenge every night. He's willing to do it, and uh, gives us a different different look, different feel. And uh, as a follow up, Chris just asked him the other day about probably the best play he made last season, the most memorable, was against the Denver Nuggets. It was yeah. an extra effort play uh, <laughs> in, in the open court. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you smile, I'm, I'm assuming you remember that. Just vaguely. Yeah, co coaching against that. Uh, those types of plays, what do you remember about that? Play? Well, it's just, you know, to my point, though, he, he's always going to compete regardless of the situation. He's going to give himself up. He's going to make winning plays. Um, and I think that bodes to his competitive nature. So it, more and more that you have that on the floor, the more guys you have like that on your roster, uh, really gives you gives yourself a good chance.
from the classrooms, kind of the retention part of it. How have they been doing? You know, from the start of camp to now, you guys getting ready to get on the plane to go to the It's been good overall, and I think it's you know still upon us to keep preaching the message. You know, it's at times the game speeds up. You know, when you get into live segments, some of the teaching points you got slippage, and you're gonna have slippage throughout the season. But how do you minimize that? You know, and I think through film, through walkthrough, uh, you know, individual teaching, but it's got to be something we harp on daily. We just don't expect guys after six or seven practices to just have it. You know, I think it's going to be maintenance work all season. Have you and Brad had a conversation yet about just his minutes and usage of you wanting him to be the best version of himself yeah. as a two-way player, mm -hmm. but also being cognizant of heavy minutes? Sure. No, I think we, we've talked uh, on several occasions actually about that. Um, and I think it's important for him to know that we need him. And, but it's also for him to take that next step in his growth is to, you know, get back to being a complete player. We've all seen him do it on offense. I've seen it personally, you know, with him being able to do it on the defensive end. But to, to have him do it on, on both ends of the floor nightly and to, to compete at a high level for 48 minutes, I mean, I think it's a lot. So we're going to ask a lot of him on both sides. I think it's also being mindful uh, with the depth that we have. We have the flexibility of, you know, getting him off the ball. Maybe that helps a possession too. Uh, reducing his minutes a couple of minutes per half because we have guys who can hold water. And um, doing that, you know, you hope maybe you get a little bit more. Well, let me ask you about Cruz. He told me it was really him that said, I need to be a better defender. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he is 6'10", that can guard twos, threes, fours. When you look at the structure of how you want to guard people, mm -hmm. how much is that flexibility something that you kind of, well, once again, it gives you another guy who's, whose mindset is I got to guard. If I want to stay on the floor. I want to impact the game. That's got to be something I do. Uh, his size, to your point, allows you to, to downsize. He can play bigs. He can guard smalls. Um, it gives you some flexibility in switching. And we'll get to a lot of that. Uh, you know, to start, it's going to be pretty, pretty simple. But I think just being able to have that in your back pocket, something you can go to as an adjustment, it, it really makes you feel there's a comfort level there. That you always got a plan B. Sounds like um, communication on defense has been an emphasis in practice, and some players have said they feel like it's, it's improved from last year. Mm -hmm. Just kind of what has been the approach there from, from your perspective? Well, the big thing for me, and like I said, I, I wasn't here last year, so it's hard for me to judge, but um, I got this from, from Coach Malone. He would always say communication is concentration. At first, you're like, what does that mean? Well, the point being, if, if I don't know what to say, I'm not saying anything. So you have to understand what your responsibility is in that moment. I'll be able to relay that. So all five guys on the floor are on the same page. Um, and the big key is even when it's not correct coverage by the book, my communication trumps that. So now there's no confusion. And, you know, it, yay, might not, might, might not be textbook, but because we're communicating, we're all in sync. We'll transition to Zoom for some questions for Coach. Let's start with David Aldridge. Hey, Wes. Um, I wonder in an era where offense seems to be everything, the, whether it's the league emphasizing it or teams or, or analytics, whatever, offense is at the top of, you know, everybody's shooting threes, a ton of threes. How do you cut through that noise when guys value themselves by how many points they score to get them to understand the importance of defense? Oh, I think once again, it's a mindset, you know, and I think uh, we were clickbait in as far as the generation. So those are the highlights you watch. That's what you absorb. Um, so sometimes that becomes what's most important. Um, but when you look at it, you know, think about 20 of the last 20 NBA champions, all 10, they've all been in the top 10 defensive efficiency. So to win and win sustainably, to win big, that has to be, you know, who you are. Um, we can dance around that and say, well, you know, it's a make or miss league. True, but we got to force misses. Um, and, and that's the mindset we're trying to, pre to, to preach um, and hold guys accountable to. Mm -hmm. uh, the sooner, and we've seen some of that through camp, and uh, I'd like to continue to see more of it, is that uh, guys hold each other accountable. And then that takes a lot of the pressure off us as a staff and knowing now they're policing themselves. And, and so far, who are, the, who are the good talkers defensively? 
Well, everyone at, to, at some point has, has made, you know, an effort to elevate that side of the, their game. Um, it's great to see Brad, obviously Kyle, uh, Trez. Um, and, the, and the hard part is getting the young guys up to speed, being comfortable, you know, using their voice. Um, even when they know exactly what's going on or what they should be doing, what other guys should be doing. Be comfortable having uncomfortable conversations. To so call a teammate out in the most respectful manner, but hold that guy accountable. Thank you. Matthew. Yeah. Hey, Wes. Uh, when a team has to incorporate a, a new point guard or is learning to do that, what is that process like? And what are some things that, you know, players like Brad and the rest like kind of have to be aware of, like of how Spencer plays and that sort of thing? Well, some of that's just getting a feel for each other. Uh, it's, it's one thing if it's a schematic situation, because that's pretty cut and dry. It's black and white as far as we're doing this, we're not doing that. But just the, the overall flow of the game, you just have to get a feel for, pe for people. Uh, I think it doesn't take, take, doesn't take long. I think, um, you know, you play in the summer, you, you, you play pickup, you're going to know right away a guy's strengths, you know, what area of the floor they want to play in. Uh, what's their go-to move? What's the counter? Um, so I think you, you pick that up pretty early. Um, but then as a point guard, you know, how do you orchestrate that? You may know a guy likes this spot. How do you get him to that spot? in the confines of what we have offensively. So understand the structure, and then on a micro level, understand your teammates' strengths and weaknesses. And what have you noticed from Spencer in regard to that, that latter point? He's a very cerebral player. I mean, he understands time score, you know, uh, the situation. He knows how to get guys open. He knows how to orchestrate looks for guys who got a game going. Um, you know, he'll move guys around, you know, within the, in the flow of the offense as far as to get a guy going to his strong hand or to get a guy, you know, curling, you know, into his shot in the right direction. So I give him a lot of credit. He has a really good feel. Um, and he's, he's pretty bright as far as understanding what, what guys like to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Neil. Hey coach. Um, a lot of the players that were here last year, you know, talked about that, you know, the communication wasn't, you know, up to snuff and that was, you know, part of their, you know, demise on that end of the court. Is that something that one, you were able to notice before taking the job? You know, I know Tommy and Ted, you know, said a lot about, oh, you guys would watch film together. And is that something that you can pick up on? Or is that something that guys from last year told you? And so you're putting a greater emphasis on it now? I mean, I think it's all of that, you know, as well as maybe a generational issue. <laughs> These guys don't, they don't talk. I mean, they just don't, you know, you go to a meeting and, guys everyone's on their phone so it's just a I don't know it, it's not unique to this team I've had the same discussions we had the same debates amongst our staff with um, you know some of the previous teams I've been with how do you get guys to communicate um, it just you got to force it out of them at times you know whether it's through a drill whether it's just you know something you harp on but we as coaches oftentimes do all the talking and that's great the gym's popping there's a lot of noise it's energetic but that's not going to do you a whole lot of a whole lot of good, you know, between the lines and once the games get going. Uh, so really just kind of hammering that, that concept, you know, home. That, hey, you guys have to own that talk. Uh, the, the earlier you do it, the more comfortable you do it, you know, now it becomes a habit. And that's what we're trying to build now is uh, so these things are not, you know, new and foreign. These are just how we, how we operate, how we react, um, and how we play the game. Thanks, Coach. Alif? Hey, Coach. Um, I'm curious, you know, heading into this preseason, you know, as the head coach, how do you balance wanting success but also wanting, you know, growth for your team for long-term success? It depends on what you determine as success. I mean, obviously, we'd love to win every game we, we play, but, you know, thankfully, the preseason doesn't count. So the most important thing is to see where we are on that growth track. You know, are we getting the retention, the application? Are we seeing more carryover? Uh, do we see the care factor? Do we see the buy-in? Do you see the energy, the competitive spirit? Uh, now, we don't win the game. Okay, so be it. Um, but did we do these other things correctly? I think we can build on those other things. Those are things that will, you know, keep us grounded. You know, that'll form our foundation. And from that, we can grow. And last question to Christos. Hey, coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking about your front court, how big is the flexibility with Montrezl, uh, 
with uh, Thomas Bryan when, when he will return in action with uh, Daniel Gafford. How big is the flexibility and do you think that is one of the biggest strengths of your team? Well, it's definitely a big strength because, you know, there's, there's not a lot of drop off. You know, obviously, TB was coming along before he got hurt. Daniel's been terrific, you know, and he's a he's going to be a dynamic young player. Uh, Trez is, has been a solid bet. Um, he's been centered in his role with other teams and he, he knows where he can impact the game. So to have three bigs, you know, who can compete, who can start, who can come off the bench, who may at times often play together. It gives you a lot of flexibility, um, but it also it's, it's intriguing because it, it keeps that competitive spirit up. It keeps the level of play up, knowing that you always uh, you have a guy behind you uh, who's going to push you, who's uh, going to compete with you and and hopefully make you a better player. And from your perspective, how big is the inspiration of Bradley Bill to his teammates to to push to push them to be better players through the practices? Oh, well, it's huge. I mean, I think he's he's take that he's taken that upon himself this year, in particular to to own his voice, be more of a vocal leader. I, mean, I said it from day one, he's always been a lead by example guy, which is great. But uh, that's going to be the next step for him: is uh, take command of the locker room because. Whether he wants to or not, he's, he's our best player. He's our team leader. And I know he's a team first guy, but at times that means also, you know, pulling guys up, pushing them uh, to get more out of them. And I think he can do it. And he's shown at times that uh, he has a voice. Um, he's challenged them, you know, in, in these first seven practices, which I love. Uh, but it's also incumbent up upon him. Hey, if you're going to challenge guys, you got to live by it. And uh, so far he's done that. So it's, it's been a great thing to see.